See, Mark. It's the spice for you. You know, Lelengi, we really lucky. All right, so this week we're celebrating all things sumac. Sumac is from the dried berry of a plant and it's used widely in Middle Eastern cooking, especially um, in Iran and other parts of the Middle East. It's got a really wonderful sour flavor that you could use in, in place of like lemons or lemon zest, you would use sumac. It's super versatile in cooking, so you could use it to finish dishes, so you can add it on top of salads like fatouche, um, or you can use it as marinade for meats. You can use it to add to onion pickle to make sumac onions. Um, you can use it to stir into yogurt and have that as a dip on the side with some kofta. There's so, so many ways and uses that you can use sumac for. Um, you can also use it in desserts. It's really delicious with sugar. It kind of tastes like sour Skittles. We love sumac at Atsalengi. Uh, we add it to so many of our recipes, uh, as you might have noticed. So what are you waiting for? Buy yourself a bag of sumac and start using it in your cooking. Rolling. Um, hi. <laughs> so today I'm making a Swiss chard and sumac galette because it's all about celebrating the sumac, uh, which is just going to add a wonderful sour flavor to this galette. Um, but first off, I'm going to start by making the dough. Um, in this bowl, I've already got wholemeal flour and plain flour. I've added in some dried herbs, thyme and oregano, um, a bit of sugar and a bit of salt. And now I've got this fridge cold butter that I cubed and I'm just gonna drop it into the dough like this. And then I'm gonna use my hands to pinch each cube into the flour until it's kind of incorporated. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just kind of want to give it a pinch. You have to make sure that your butter cubes are nice and cold because you don't kind of you don't want them to melt into uh, the flour mixture. So it's kind of just like rough crum crumbles, really. Um, you're not looking for anything like perfect at all. And then you want to pour in ice cold water. Make sure it's not warm water because then it will melt your butter, which you don't want. And you're gonna kind of bring it all together into like a shaggy mass. So my doughs come together, it's not perfect, uh, which is fine. So you just wanna get some plain flour and just spread it all across the clean work surface. And then just tip your dough onto the work surface and make sure you get every last bit. And then just kind of form it into a round. And you can see all the butter pieces, which is fine. That's exactly what I want. Now you're gonna use a rolling pin that I'm just gonna sort of flour. And then keep turning your dough so it doesn't stick to your surface. Oops. See that part. <laughs> Turn it around. Don't worry about it not being perfect. It doesn't need to be. That's what's so nice about galettes. They're really nice and rustic. So you want it to be quite thin, so which it is now. It's about one millimeter. And now what you want to do is you want to bring in the longer ends, kind of folding them towards the center, like so. And then you just want to roll it over. And then you want to bring in the shorter ends. Again, none of this is perfect and that's totally okay. And you want to fold it over. And then you want to fold it again, roll it, and then give it one last fold. So now you went from a shaggy mess to a nice little square. And all that folding is really gonna help create all those flaky bits, uh, which you're gonna have when you bake the pastry. So now I'm going to just 
cover this really well and refrigerate it for about 20 minutes because it'll be easier to work with when it's nice and cold. If your kitchen is too warm, um, then be sure to refrigerate your dough and take it out just when it's nice and cold because if it's too warm, it's gonna be really hard to work with and it's gonna start melting, which is not what you want. Okay, so I'm ready to make my filling. I'm gonna start by car caramelizing some sliced onions. Got some butter and a bit of oil in this pan. It's nice and hot. And I'm gonna add my onions and coat them in the fat. And then you wanna cook it on a gentle heat. So about a medium heat for 20 to 30 minutes. You basically wanna cook them nice and slowly so they get nice and caramelized. Um, so don't rush this part. So now my onions are nice and caramelized and golden. I'm going to remove them from the heat and transfer them to this bowl. And we'll use that later. And then I'm going to return the pan to a heat with a bit of olive oil. And then I've got my rainbow charred stems, which I finely chopped and add those in there. And you just wanna cook them for a few minutes until they're nice and softened. So the stems always take longer to cook than the leaves. So these are my leaves, which I'll add in a few minutes. And if you can't find uh, rainbow chard, you can use regular Swiss chard. Um, you could even use other leafy greens, you could use spinach, you could use kale, whatever is in season really. All right, so now to my stems, I'm gonna add some crushed garlic. And you just wanna stir this through and cook it for about 30 seconds or so till it's nice and fragrant. And now I'm gonna add um, my leaves a little bit at a time. It'll seem like a lot, but it'll wilt down real quick. And then you want to add good grinded pepper, nice pinch of salt. All right, see, it's kind of collapsed and it happened relatively quickly, which is what I want. You just want to cook it for another minute or so, just so it kind of wilts. Okay, so now it's ready. <clears throat> and because chard has a, a bit of moisture in it, it does release a bit of water, which I really don't want any kind of moisture like that in, in the, on the galette, because I don't want a soggy pastry. So just in case, I'm gonna remove all of this and put it into a colander set over a bowl so that I can squeeze out any excess moisture. And then you just wanna kinda of press it lightly. So it didn't look like it had much liquid, but it actually has collected quite a bit, um, which I don't want. And I'm just gonna leave that to cool just slightly. Okay, into the bowl, I'm gonna add a bit of parsley, which I'm just gonna roughly chop. You could use other herbs that you have around if you like. Basil would be really nice, some coriander. I'm also going to add some pine nuts and some golden raisins. Um, you could use regular raisins if you wanted, or you could use currants. And now I'm going to add the chard. And I'm going to add sumac, which is what's going to give this, this tart a really nice sourness. So I haven't toasted the pine nuts because this is gonna be going onto the galette um, in the oven. So I don't want to become too toasted. Um, so I just put them in raw. Okay, so that is the green sumaki chardi filling. And now I'm gonna check on our pastry uh, so we can start forming the pie. Okay, so um, I've just taken my pastry out of the fridge, I put it on a nice floured surface and I'm going to just roll it out now to the shape that I want it uh, for the galette. 
So this can be a round, it can be more of a rustic oblong, it can be a rectangle, whatever you want. It doesn't, doesn't have to be perfect, um, which is what I like, because I'm not about that life. So I'm gonna go somewhere in between a, a <laughs> I'm not really sure what shape this is, but this is the shape that I'm going for. Verena would be rolling around. She'd be very angry at me right now, but it's fine. The main thing is you want to keep it around um, a millimeter thick. What you want to do is have your tray ready and a piece of parchment paper on your tray. And then you want to gently lift it up and onto the parchment paper. And you want to do it now before you have the fillings on there. Okay, wait, let me just do that again. Don't film this part. So now you want to get some ricotta to kind of spread it just around the base. Okay, and then I'm going to follow with a bit of blue cheese, dolce latte. Um, you could use any kind of blue cheese you like. You could use Stilton, you could use Roquefort. It took me a while to like blue cheese. Uh, now I do love it, but I used to be not the biggest fan. So if you don't want to use blue cheese, then you can use feta or you can use mozzarella or a different cheese that is just less um, intense. But I promise you the blue cheese really, really works here. All right, and then I'm gonna get this lovely Swiss chard caramelized onion mixture. And I'm gonna spread that all over. And then you're gonna go in with the rest of your blue cheese. So you'll notice that I kind of left a bit of a rim all around, which is unexposed. And this is the part that I'm gonna kind of pull over. Okay, so I'm gonna make little slits about eight centimeters apart, and I'll show you why in a second. This is a purely decorative thing. Okay, so you wanna kind of pull it over, and then you wanna pull this one so that it covers the last one. You wanna do the same here. Pull and cover. So now the last thing I'm gonna do is I've got a bit of beaten egg wash and I'm just going to brush the rim. So that's what's gonna help it be nice and golden when you bake it. Okay, and then last thing I'm going to do is take some of my sumac and sprinkle it around the rim like this. Okay, so I don't wanna put it in the oven right now. I'm gonna stick it in the fridge for about half an hour so it gets nice and cold. Uh, if you're making it ahead, you could do it the morning of and then leave it in the fridge to get nice and cold. Um, you could even do it the night before and then just cover it nicely and put it in the fridge. And then you want it to be really, really nice and cold when you put it into your oven. Okay, so my pie is all done and golden and it smells really cheesy and delicious. I'm going to gently remove it from, or transfer it from this tray onto a wire rack because I don't want the, the bottom to get soggy. I want it to stay nice and crispy and this way it will cool nicely. There we go. Okay, and that's it, it's all done. Only thing I'm gonna do is sprinkle a bit more sumac on top because you can never have enough. And that is all. This is nice? It is nice. Did you make this? I might have <laughs> dabbled in the art of cooking. <laughs> mm. Mm. 
I'm, you know, it's, it's funny because like sumac and blue cheese is not the first thing that comes to mind, but it's really? so nice because it, it's just like, because you've got the sweetness there also. I think I would just have this with some salad and I think I'd be good. Yeah, I don't even need the salad. I love no. it as it is. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally Moorish. I know, and we always love sitting here, don't we? To watch this view. If only the pigeons were here to, <laughs> to make it even better. <laughs>